Hello everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome to my unboxing and first look of the Hyper 212 EVO Cooler Master CPU Cooler. I've been looking to get myself a CPU cooler for a while, and I've been debating whether or not to go to a very expensive all-in-one liquid solution, uh, perhaps going for something with the Dark Rock Pro, but since I'm on a bit of a budget, and since this cooler is supposed to be really good, in fact one of the best uh, bang for the bucks coolers that there are, I figured for 30 bucks or so I might as well go ahead and buy it. So I went out and got it, and I'm going to be doing an unboxing for you. Uh, at the end of the video, I will have thermal comparisons for a test render clip that I'm going to run. But for now, let's take a look at the unboxing. So I got my trusty, really dull uh, wooden army knife here, utility knife. Just gonna cut that plastic. And the unboxing can begin in proper. So as we can see here, the box is very basic, nothing too special about it. And the container is just simply a little plastic thing. So this isn't really fancy box, but what do you expect with a budget cooler? We have the back plate here, which is reversible and compatible with tons of different things. So AMD and Intel, bunch of different cards. So you don't really need to worry, it's highly compatible. It's also very solid and metal. We have a silica packet, which I can just go ahead here and pop into my mouth. Mmm, delicious, yes. Then uh, we're going to take a look at this. It looks like we got a bunch of hardware here. So this is the screws. This is, this is what we're going to be using to attach this to the PC itself. Uh, this here is the cooler with its uh, fan. Not the nicest fan in the world I've seen. And we also have some wonderful, wonderful instructions. All right, well, it's time for the physical overview of the CPU cooler. It uses a design that uses four heat pipes on each side. It has this metal uh, radiator style mesh here. You can attach a fan on both sides, but by default, it only comes with one fan, but you can set this up to be in a push-pull configuration, which I did eventually use, although for my cooling bench or for my benchmarks at the end, I didn't use that. I just used the regular fan to try and keep things fair. Uh, the fan is plastic and fairly annoying, but it does come with a four pin connector which uh, you can use to lower the speed via software or via a fan controller. Uh, I'm lowering the span seed manually using my uh, motherboard which is an ASUS motherboard so it has the Fan Expert 2.0 software there. Uh, you had to play around with it slightly in the BIOS to get it working but once I did it stopped it from being very annoying. I also added a fan on later to make it push-pull and a little bit less annoying. So that's pretty much all there is to it for that uh, CPU cooler, so I guess we should get to my benchmarks. Now, I didn't do a lot of benchmarks, it was just kind of a, a really basic thing because I'm not really good with benchmarks. However, here are the results. Uh, I ran a simple render test using Sony Movie Studio, the program I use to edit all of my videos, and then I did an idle test over five minutes and I monitored the temperature and got the averages. Uh, these each had three passes and these are the aggregated results. It's just in degrees and lower is better. So you can see it dropped the temperature by a little bit, but nothing very substantial. However, the advantage of this, it does give you a little bit of room to overclock. And honestly, I think that that outweighs the little bit of extra noise from the fan. Now, I do have a push-pull configuration now. But due to some hardware changes and the loss of my original benchmarking clips, uh, I'm not able to give you an accurate comparison, but leave it to say that it does improve things, although again, not a whole lot. Overall, I would recommend this CPU cooler for people who are on a very tight budget but would like to expand their overclocking potential a little bit. I'm also going to recommend two sort of above this tier CPU coolers based on some reviews and other things I've seen. The Nokia NHD14 is a step up, comes with significant better fans because Noctua's are the Ferrari of case fans as I'd like to say even though they look a little bit ugly they are honestly the best and there's also the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3 which is probably the sexiest air CPU cooler you can get in this price range and again it comes with significantly better fans so I've included those as just the other kind of recommendations uh, if you want to check out more tech videos on my channel leave a like and a comment if you'd like to see something else please let me know thank you very much for watching and I apologize for this video taking so long to come out this video should have been released a lot long time ago. I don't know how it got put on the back burner, but I hope you enjoy anyway. I have been Zool. Have an excellent day.